Hello, uh, we're here with the uh, King County Executive Dow Constantine, who is running for re-election. Would you like to go ahead with your two-minute introduction? For sure. Thank you so much, Nicole. And thanks to everyone for taking time out of your evening to hear from me tonight. I've done this job many, many, many times, uh, never online, but uh, I really appreciate everything you do to advance democratic values in your work in the party. I'm running for re-election, and I need your help. I need your endorsement. Uh, we have faced uh, a year of unprecedented challenges and crises. Uh, I believe that my performance during the past 14 months tells you a lot of what you need to know uh, about who should be uh, at the helm of this county. Uh, we have produced the lowest rate of death and infection from COVID of any major jurisdiction in the nation. Uh, we have advanced during this time our equity and social justice, our anti-racism work, we are now uh, preparing to pass a budget at the council where I've proposed funding to get our businesses, our trusted and beloved community organizations and individuals through the rest of this crisis and onto a recovery that will be more equitable where people will have an opportunity uh, in the words of the King County True North to thrive. Uh, one thing is clear, these times have uh, really gotten people unmoored from the status quo, and that is a good thing. We cannot go back to a status quo that didn't work for everyone. Today, people are ready for action on housing and homelessness. That's why I have a $350 million fund to move people inside, off the streets, with the supports to keep them housed, on anti-racism and systemic transformation of our criminal legal system, with deep community engagement, on tackling the climate crisis and cleaning up our waterways and much more. This is a unique moment and much of the work we've been doing over the course of the last four years is now much more possible because of the very crises we live through. I look forward to speaking with you more about them during our questions. Great, thank you. So I will go ahead and post the first question into the chat and Carrie, if you would like to go ahead. Absolutely. The county executive often must build consensus with the city council, the cities, and the state. Where have you found the opportunity for consensus and where do you see opportunities for improvement? So I think my reputation is uh, as someone who is even tempered and has the temperament to bring people together to create solutions to some of our most difficult problems. I would just cite as one example, sound transit. For 50 years, we've needed a high capacity transit system serving the entire region. Uh, people did not think we could do it. I brought together people from across the political spectrum, including from all of our cities to get the legislature to give us authority, to create a plan that people agreed with, to raise the funds and get the measure passed. And now we are working together to build it. That is really an unparalleled accomplishment, not just locally, but across our state, the largest capital program we've ever seen. And I'm the person who drove that through being able to get people to rally around our shared values. That's the secret in taking on all the other challenges I mentioned. And I'm, I'm really proud of the work we have done to try to unite this region. I'm sorry, were these two minute answers? Because They I can... were. Okay, well, let me say just a few more things. Uh, Another example is our, uh, our regional homelessness authority. So I talked with the city. We determined that we should have a single process and pool our money for the emergency services for people who are living homeless. Uh, I helped convince the county council and the city council to cede some of that authority that they had to spend that money for the good of all to give a full voice to our other cities and to those with lived experience so that we could regionalize and democratize our efforts. And that is going to be successful. It's very difficult to create a new paradigm, one with a, with a flatter organizational structure, but it really gets at the challenges that people are facing today on the streets. Uh, whether we're talking about infrastructure investments or critical programmatic investments, uh, I think I've shown, my, my work has shown the ability to bring people together. Great, thank you. So we're moving on to question number two, and Sarah, if you would like to take that one. Hi, Dow. How would you advocate for alternatives to incarceration in the county's criminal legal system? How would you make zero youth incarceration a reality in King County? 
Well, thank you for the question. We have been, I think, leading on uh, prevention, on uh, alternatives to detention, on alternatives to adjudication. And uh, in the time that I've been in office, I've been able to reduce youth detention from nearly 90 youth on an average night when I was sworn in to just 15 youth during the first quarter of this year. That is a remarkable change. And it is born of determined, sustained effort to create alternatives, to uh, create uh, within a, a very diffuse system the will to find ways to keep kids from coming into contact with the law or ending up detained. Uh, and what we are doing now, and this goes along with the community co-creation of, of, of new paradigms of public safety, is commencing the work to have communities help articulate and own the ways in which we are going to uh, help kids who've, who've gotten in trouble with the criminal legal system, sometimes for very serious offenses. Uh, we are going to need to get the last mile on this. We're going to need communities to help us with the community-based alternatives like Choose 180 and Community Passageways with whom we work on a regular basis to help us with our gun violence reduction work, which is a public health-based effort to identify those who are most likely to be victimized or to victimize with guns and to get the public health interventions to them to, un to, to unwind that, uh, that tension. And ultimately, to create a, um, a system of uh, public safety that meets the expectations of our communities today. And that means one that has much more capacity in public health, in human services, and much less reliance on command and control and policing. And I think that we can do that. I think that we, of all places in this country, have the will and the resources to accomplish it, but it is a steep hill and it is not something just for government, but for community to make happen. Great, thank you. Uh, question number three and Mackenzie. Thanks. Um, King County needs further investment in health and human services. What increase in health and human services would you prioritize and how would you fund and implement these increases? So in the renewal of Best Starts for Kids, our nation leading most comprehensive early childhood program uh, in America, uh, I am proposing an additional 3000 slots for subsidized childcare. And I think this is one of the areas in which we simply must respond as a community. We have reduced uh, the, the uh, number of people without healthcare uh, to record lows. And I think we're within reach of getting to uh, virtual uh, um, community-wide health coverage. But in childcare, there are some 10,000 people in this county who are unable to afford childcare, and therefore they have to constantly make the choice between staying home and nurturing their kids or going out and earning the money to keep a roof over their family's head. That is unacceptable. And so we are really uh, upping the ante on this. We are going to bring uh, enough money to solve nearly a third of that challenge. The federal and state governments have just recently put some money in, some of it only for a year, for early childhood work. I think that is an area where we uh, need to decide that everyone will have access to childcare because we know, and this is what Best Starts is based on, that uh, early nurturing and the prevention of adverse childhood experiences have everything to do with better outcomes for kids. Uh, I do think that our veterans uh, seniors in Human Services levy, our mental illness drug dependency funding, and our Best Starts for Kids funding have all knit together to make up for some of the terrible failings of the state legislature to fix our tax system. And that I, is a message, if I don't get a chance later to say, I'll say now. The key to solving these problems is having a tax system where everybody simply pays their fair share based on their income, and their wealth. If we did that, we would have everything we need in the state without anyone breaking a sweat. Great, thank you. And question four, Summer. So if a lug reelected, how would you use your position to promote racial equity and advance an anti-racist agenda? Would you decrease the King County Sheriff budget? And if so, by approximately what percentage? Do you support and will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? Yes, um, on the latter, and of course, we supported the initiative that was aimed directly at that issue. And I have been 
uh, uh, really uh, confronted over and over with the tragedies uh, that come from police uh, use of force in not just the King County Sheriff's Office, but departments all across the county. That's why we engage with those whose families have uh, lost loved ones to uh, create a new inquest system. Davida Briscoe, for example, uh, whose, whose brother Che was gunned down by the Seattle police has endorsed my campaign because she knows that I have engaged in real authentic work with those impacted to create real change in our communities. Uh, right now, our uh, anti-racism agenda is uh, being implemented. I uh, stood up over the course of time, first a commitment to equity and social justice, then an equity and social justice office, then a plan, strategic plan, implementation plan, leading with racial justice, and then our anti-racism core team, which at my direction went and created both a set of budget priorities and a set of policy priorities for us to adopt where we can begin uprooting uh, racism, systemic racism inside and outside of the public sector and remaking this community as an example for the nation. Uh, so I'm excited about the work we're doing now and the work we are able to do in the future. And part of what I have done is fund that community co-creation of new systems inside and outside of law enforcement by putting money in the budget to allow people who do not have the economic luxury that many of us have to participate in government to be able to be at the table. Great, thank you. And so now we're gonna open it up to questions from the board and the responses to these are one minute in length and the first hand I see up is Summer. Um, I just wanted to go back to that question of would you decrease the King County oh, Sheriff? Right. Yes, may and I? by approximately what percentage? So we, uh, in the last budget, I redirected uh, several million dollars, all of the money coming from the marijuana that was going to the sheriff's office into programs directed by community to help people undo the impacts of the drug war, including uh, to uh, have the convictions removed from their records. We have been reducing the funding to the sheriff's office and redirecting it to alternatives as we've been reducing funding to the jail and redirecting it to alternatives. We just announced uh, that I believe $16 million that had been going into the King County Jail to guarantee slots for the city to be able to bring people and have them detained is now going to be used instead to prevent seconds. people from coming into the criminal legal system in the first place. And as with the marijuana funding, so with this, the allocation of this money is done in concert with, with co-creation with the communities that have been impacted. This is the new way for, for governments. And I think we've been pioneering this uh, in many different respects since I took office. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, Sarah. If reelected, what will you do to ensure that King County realizes its ambitious climate, re climate reduction goals, particularly in the King County Climate Action Plan, and really centers racial and climate justice and helps ensure a just transition to a clean energy economy? Uh, thank you for that. Our new climate plan uh, has three elements. One is, of course, reducing our carbon impact. The second is centering what we are referring to as frontline communities. So ensuring racial justice for those who, uh, uh, climate justice, for those who've been most impacted by climate change, those who stand to be most impacted, who are least able to uh, uh, pay to protect themselves from the impact of climate change. And then third, preparing our region for climate impacts that will inevitably come. Uh, our strategies involve increasing transit and fully electrifying Metro Transit. And I'll remind you that we've put in place both reduced fare and fee free fare programs to make sure everybody uh, can ride transit and is not uh, excluded because of cost. Uh, to build out a regional transit system across three counties uh, and to uh, put in place green building codes that we are creating not just for us, but for all jurisdictions across our region to make sure the built environment is no longer an anchor keeping us from being able to achieve our goal of zero emissions. And we will cut emissions in half this decade. Great, thank you. Any other follow-up questions? 
follow-up question? I have one from a member who was interested in hearing uh, candidates' positions on gun regulations. Uh, I have a long record of uh, strong support for sensible gun regulation. I, in fact, co-chaired the House, House Judiciary Committee when the Democrats uh, were uh, released from purgatory and allowed to, again, control committees uh, in the legislature and brought forward uh, a number of uh, gun safety measures uh, to uh, really odd crowds show, showing up uh, to lobby against them in the legislature. Uh, I have, since I've been county executive, had the opportunity to move uh, forward on a public health based approach to gun safety. And I alluded to this, but I wanna talk about it a little bit more. We are working uh, through public health, through our zero youth detention seconds. work that I launched to identify the approximately 200 to 250 people in our community who are the most connected to gun violence, the most likely to be harmed, the most likely to make, commit gun violence and seeking to directly intervene to help them avoid those outcomes. Great, thank you. Sarah. Uh, we have a housing and homelessness crisis in this county and you talked about the Regional Homelessness Authority. Um, what are you going to do specifically uh, if elected to a next term to address and create more affordable, supportive and permanent supportive housing to meet those ambitious goals um, and really prioritize BIPOC and vulnerable communities? So we have several hundred million dollars out right now for affordable and, um, and housing with, with assistance for people, uh, permanent supportive housing for people uh, to be able to get stabilized, to move on with their lives. But the, the, the innovation that has really been made possible by COVID is this. When the coronavirus landed here in King County, I realized we needed to uh, help people who were living homeless avoid infection. So, we rented hotels and moved people out of crowded shelters and into a room of their own. And what we found there is it did prevent the transmission, but it also allowed people to quickly get well, get rested, get centered, get cleaned up and be ready to start taking seconds. control of their lives again. So now we are using $350 million to buy unused hotels and other facilities. This year, I will move 800 people from chronic homelessness into a place of their own with the services to keep them housed and another 500 into enhanced 24 hour shelter. It is an exciting moment where we're going to be turning the tide. Great, thank you. Any additional questions? I will, um, I'm curious uh, a little bit more about that. If you'd like to uh, take another minute to, to sure. finish that cut thought. <laughs> so, this is different than the emergency housing because with the emergency rentals, uh, I was able to just go to a city, get the hotel, move people in. Now we're working with cities to site the, ho site the facilities and the hotels where the cities agree, which is a little bit more complex dance, but we're negotiating for, I believe, eight properties in seven different cities right now. We recruit a service provider to run those facilities who has a good relationship within the city. And then we're able to move people in to get them stabilized. They can accept the mental health or drug treatment, the job training or job connections and begin moving on with their lives. Some people need to be in uh, permanent supportive housing, but some people can really, you know, given that solid foundation underfoot, be able to uh, take control of their lives again, again, earning money. And I have created 400 jobs for formerly homeless people right now to be able to uh, begin earning money again and get back on their feet. Great, thank you. And now we'll ask you to go ahead and uh, give a one minute wrap up. Look, my values are your values. They are progressive democratic values and they are amply demonstrated in the work I have done. I also have to run a government with 15,000 employees across a jurisdiction of 2.3 million people. It has a lot of challenges. All the easy problems have already been solved. I am taking on the toughest problems and we are solving them, including things like building a regional high capacity transit system 50 years in the making, including things like remaking, reimagining, reinventing the criminal legal system 
to fit our values and the expectations of our community in the 21st century. Uh, I not only believe in the things you believe in, I am someone who has a demonstrated record of being able to get them done and the tenacity to do it. So I ask for your support. I ask for your endorsement. Uh, we are going to win this thing. Uh, and I'm really excited about what the next four years has in store. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.